Hey guys, Brian Beeler here with you at the Storage Review Lab. Today we've got something pretty exciting. Seagate has launched a new SSD, the Iron Wolf 510 SSD designed for use in NAS. Now, this will sound familiar because we already have an Iron Wolf SSD designed for NAS. So what's the difference? Well, this is the Iron Wolf 110 SSD launched last year. And what this does is brings capacity, this one in my hand is a four terabyte class drive, into the SATA port. So think about this more like a hard drive replacement. While you can still use it as a cache, we've got something new for that job in the 510. Now the big difference is that this is NVMe, so you're gonna get all that big performance, over 3000 megabytes per second read is the spec with a pretty decent spec on the right too. Now, while the NVMe SSD might sound familiar, there's another one. So Seagate also has the Fire CUDA SSD that's also an M.2 NVMe. Now this is not designed for NAS. It could go in it and it would work just fine and everybody would be happy. But this is really specced out more for performance and uh, it'll give you better writes and it'll be more for a desktop or a laptop where uh, maximum performance is, is what's desired. This guy, more duty built for a NAS. It comes with uh, two years of data recovery services it, it uh, supports the uh, NAS health monitoring software that Seagate offers and has a couple other benefits, including higher endurance. So this is a one drive write per day endurance rating where the uh, Fire CUDA is a 0.7. So this is more about using the right product for the job. Uh, of course, we've got also this in the Iron Wolf family, your more traditional hard drive. So we've got all these options. We've got hard drives that can go in the NAS. We've got capacity SSDs that can go in the NAS, and now we've got a high performance NVMe that can go in the NAS. And so let's work through some of these logistics. First of all, let's get this guy out. We will use our handy dandy seal foil cutter, just like you would in any lab. And get access to this guy. comes in the tiniest of tiny anti-static bags. Now let's take a look at what we've got. So, you know, again, normal sort of thing, M.2 NVMe board. It uh, has a little more Spartan sticker, so it'll be similar to the Fire Cuda and the Iron Wolf will have the same on the back. The Iron Wolf just doesn't get the fancy sticker. That's probably gonna cost it at least 10 to, I don't know, 15 IOPS missing that sticker. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so thinking about how this works, if we look at a popular NAS like this Synology, what do we have here, a DS918 Plus. So this is a very common higher end SMB sort of mid-range NAS from Synology. And what Synology does is it has these two bays on the bottom. Now these are really easy to access. These doors just flip open. And we could take our Iron Wolf SSD, clip them in here, and then go into DSM and enable uh, SSD caching with this drive. Really easy to do, very, very simple. If we had two drives, we could put two of them in there, and that would give us read and write caching. So with one, we'll get read only. With two, we'll get read and write. So as we think about these types of use cases, when you have, what do we have? Uh, I can't remember what we have in here, but say we've got, uh, I don't know, 16, 32 terabytes maybe of, of, S, of uh, hard drives inside. And then if we take this uh, two terabyte Iron Wolf and put it in there, enable read caching, now all of these hard drives will be accelerated, or at least the commonly accessed data. So if we think about an SMB that might have something like this with a file share, uh, presentations that are frequently pulled off of there for sales or other documentation or templates, all of that kind of workload will get cached and be working really, really quickly, uh, enabling a higher service to the end users. Now to get an idea of the performance profile of these drives, just to show you, we're gonna go ahead and run the Fire Cuda and the Iron Wolf using Seagate's dock. So we'll go ahead and plug, plug this guy in and secure it. And this is gonna just give us a feel for the difference in the performance. We're certainly not comparing one versus the other, that's not the intent, but just to give you a feel for what we could expect. Now this does enjoy it if the lid is on. 
and we'll go ahead and fire it up. So they're both going to have probably a pretty similar read profile, and that's okay. We would expect the Fire Cuda to be faster on writes. As we think about, again, going into a NAS, the environment there, even with 10G, is going to limit with two of those drives in there, the ability for those drives to ingest in terms of a write cache. So even if they can get up to eight, 900 megabytes write, that'll be in, well, really good shape. Uh, so let's see, we've got, this is showing up. So that's a good start. We'll select, and we're just gonna use black magic, make a real simple comparison here. Fire Fast Boy is the name, so let's, Go ahead and see what it does. All right, so out of the gate, like I said, we're gonna see a decent write profile. Well, a really good write profile. We're at nearly 1600 megabytes per second. Uh, okay, on the second swipe, 1800, 2500 on the reads. So we're seeing you know, really great uh, performance profile. Again, for your desktops, for your um, you know, gaming PCs, laptops, whatever, Great performance profile. All right, so 2,500 and roughly 1,700. So let's quickly shut that down. We'll swap this out just to see what happens. And then we'll have a decent idea of where we're starting from in terms of performance. Now in our full review, we will do uh, more thorough performance work Kevin will run the normal workloads. If we've got time, we'll throw it in, uh, in a QNAP maybe. QNAP's got a, a really nice SD, SSD characterization tool. And so if you're not familiar with that, definitely check out the QNAP tools. That's really great to understand the, uh, the performance capabilities. They do a whole recommendation engine uh, for performance and all that sort of thing. Um, so that's really neat. Thinking while this comes up, the... Um, capabilities of these SSDs in a NAS and how they go in. So I showed you the Synology. They've got those two easy bays that release on the bottom. Uh, some Synology units will have a card that's actually accessed internally. It uses a PCIe card slot. QNAP's got some that mount internally. Others will have them mount on the board. So the way you put these drives in will be a little different. And if you've got a NAS and you're looking for something like this to accelerate it, just make sure it supports NVMe. All the M.2 things look the same, but they're, some are SATA and some are NVMe. So SATA will cap you out at that 450, 500 megabytes per second read-write, whereas the NVMe really opens up the, uh, the portfolio or the envelope of performance there. So let's go ahead and check out disk utility. We probably, yeah, it looks like it sees it. So let's go ahead and switch over to that drive and see what we're dealing with. Now this, out of the box says reads of 3150. So we'll go ahead and check that out and see how it does. Oops. Let's get our target drive again. All right, we're not quite initialized. So let me just do that real quick. And that'll get us going. We'll call him Iron Wolf SP for speed. All right, now we'll be in business. All right, there he is. Select that guy and let's give this a run. Okay, so this is just about what we should be seeing. The spec on, on ours, this is the two terabyte model, is somewhere around 900 megabytes per second. And we're seeing 24, 26, uh, 2360 on reads. So again, if we think about 10G coming into a NAS, the theoretical max of that, that write performance, uh, this drive just even on its own, will be able to keep up and ingest mostly uh, that it's, you know, with some overhead and assuming that you're not pegging the 10G connection at all times, this drive will be great for that. And on the read side, 2400 megabytes per second, fantastic. So when we think about that, comparing it to the Fire Cuda, Fire Cuda remains faster, that's good. That's kind of what we wanna see. Sometimes we wonder about how much difference there is in the products and the design, whether it's just a little firmware tweak for the NAS drive. But no, this one's a little more over-provisioned, giving you that higher endurance rating of one drive right per day. 
and it uh, provides the read performance that you want. Now, of course, it does say 3150 on the box. Remember, those are all sort of theoretical maximums or best case scenario maximums. We're running it through a dock, through a Mac, using a, a workload generator, so that's not gonna be perfect, but it's really, really good and uh, uh, probably makes it best in class for this type of workload. So we'll get to work on the full review. Kevin will get it testing, and uh, hopefully we'll be back next week with a uh, complete review on that for storageview.com. Thanks.